Hi, it's Larry Gaines from Power Cycle Trading. Um, if you've not received my free ebook, please go to my website, powercycletrading.com. Put your name and email address in there, and you'll get uh, this ebook uh, right away. Uh, also, I have on my site now a free uh, ebook on uh, e mini futures and uh, futures trading, so you can go there and uh, you'll see that as well. Now, uh, over this past weekend, I had a really great boot camp uh, where I taught um, how to use uh, our paracycle trading model for swing trades. And uh, it was a very nice uh, boot camp, had a, a great attendance, and uh, gave out a lot of great information and trading methodology and my trading model, how it's used for swing trades. And I just wanted to highlight a few of the trades that we went over, and this is called Progressions of a Swing Trade. Now in this uh, video I'm going to show you uh, the progressions of a couple different swing trades. Uh, first off, we have three basic types of swing trades. One we call a cycle low, uh, another is a uh, breakout volatility squeeze breakout swing trade, and then another is a uh, retracement swing trade. So uh, this is the NASDAQ 100 futures, this is the daily time frame. Uh, we use multiple time frames using our trading model. Uh, to produce the uh, system signals, uh, but just wanted to show you the three different trades and just to kind of show you where uh, they took place. Um, and this was on the NASDAQ uh, futures. This came on the 16th of November. Uh, we had that really big sell off, hit the low, and then our model kicked in long uh, on the uh, 16th. And the price it took was right about 25.33. Uh, that was the first swing trade. That's what we call a cycle low swing trade. Uh, the second swing trade, you know, off the cycle low, uh, came on the 23rd of November, and the price where it got in at was right about 2603, 2604, uh, and this was a breakout volatility squeeze breakout swing trade, and then the third, still in a long direction, came on the 28th of November. Uh, and it came at around the price range about 26.36.37. So you can see all three of these had tremendous momentum, and these were all based on our system model and my swing trade trading methodology that I taught uh, over this past week uh, to uh, a good group of good group of traders. Uh, now the other uh, swing trades were also on Apple. There were quite a few, but I just wanted to highlight these. And then on Apple, you know. Uh, you know, we were able to uh, construct uh, weekly options. So I'm going to show you those weekly options that you could have taken advantage of. Uh, instead of buying the underlying Apple shares, uh, you could have bought options. I'll let you take a look to see what uh, kind of results you would have had if you'd done that. So here was uh, the Apple swing trade was also on the 16th uh, and got into Apple shares at around uh, 20, uh, 524 thereabout. Uh, and then there was an Apple uh, swing trade, uh, uh, what we call cycle high short, and that pretty much nailed it on the 3rd of December, right here at about uh, price of about 580 to 850. So now I'm going to show you uh, if you'd used options instead of buying the underline, if you'd bought calls, and instead of selling the underline, you'd bought puts. I'm going to show you what type of potential rewards you would have had doing that. Now Apple is a great one because uh, the weekly options on Apple are great to trade and now that uh, they've extended the number of weeks that you can go out on weekly so it even makes it better for swing trading. Uh, not You only, uh, not do, uh, you only uh, do not have just one week uh, of weeklies that come out but now they're like three weeks forward that you can trade weeklies on. So there are basically four weeks when you include the monthly options. So it's a fantastic uh, uh, option vehicle for using weekly options on swing trades. So here is that um, on November 16th, uh, our system kicked in for a long swing trade. And if you'd bought uh, the uh, Apple uh, expiration on December 7th, the 540 calls, uh, the system kicked in right about here at 11, 12 central. You could have bought those options for $11 a contract, and you can see where it went to. It was, you know, at the end of the 19th, one day later, 
Uh, it got up to $35, and it went up to as high as uh, almost $60 uh, on the 28th. So you can do the math on that. Remember, one option contract equals is equivalent to 100 shares of stocks. So just for example, if you'd uh, gotten into this and paid $11 and then got out at $35, well, 35 represents 100 shares. So you multiply that times 100. So that's actually $3,500 right there. And your cost was $11. So take away that 11. So your net profit on this one contract, if you'd bought at $11 right here, and you'd taken it off there, that's $3,400, thousands of percent profit. So that's as simple as it is. But you know you have to have a good directional model to show you where to get in. So if you'd bought the $11 540 uh, strike, potentially could have gotten out at 35 or you could have gotten out at 50 or you know you might have gotten out higher than that so that's one trade I wanted to show you now these are some other strikes these are different strikes this is the 550 uh, call still expiration on the 7th of December uh, and this was a uh, you know bought on the November 16th so if you bought these 550 calls uh, you could have bought those for 860 so that's uh, um, $860 a contract and uh, they went up to as high as on the 19th to over $25 a contract and then up to $40 a contract uh, on the 26th. Now here's the uh, same date, the, the uh, 16th of November, the DS07, but these are the 570 calls, so further out of the money. You could have bought these for $430 a contract right here. And they went to a high of uh, about $17 contract on the uh, 19th, which would be $1,700, and they went up to $2,400 right here uh, on the 26th, and even higher than that on the 28th. And here's one last one. Uh, here's the 580 strike, also expiration December 7th. The 580 calls. You could have bought those on the 16th at $280 a contract right here. They went up to over $1,200 a contract uh, on the high of the 19th, and then you can see they got up to about $1,800 a contract. Now, the other trade was an Apple short, swing trade short, uh, and that was on the 3rd of December right here. One second. So, yeah, so uh, our swing trade uh, model uh, that we use went short. Uh, would have gone short here uh, on Apple on the 3rd of December, which I showed you earlier uh, in the video. Now, instead of shorting the shares, uh, if you'd bought the, um, this is the $530 put uh, expiration on the 22nd of December. Uh, on this particular day, on the 3rd, you could have bought these for $180 a contract, and they went up to a high of $2,385 per contract on the 6th of December so you know basically three days later look at that huge move and your exposure was uh, defined by your risk your uh, premium paid 180 bucks a contract so if you had done that and let's just say you took it off uh, at 2385 just for grins that would be a return of be a return of 1225 percent Based on your cost of capital of 180 bucks, you would have made $2,205 a contract, and that's over a 1,000% return in three days. So that's the uh, beauty of weekly options, and that's the beauty of if you have a great uh, uh, system, directional system that can show you uh, where to get in. And here's one last example. Again, the 20s, 20 22nd expiration, the 530 puts, if you'd bought those. Those were going for $145 a contract, and they got up to as high as $2,104 a contract on the 6th of December. So if you get the momentum in your swing trade, which you want, a swing trade should last anywhere from one to three to four days. This is the kind of potential return you can get if you have a good directional system, plus if you know how to use weekly options. So if you'd like to learn more about swing trading, uh, futures and stocks and options, uh, please come join me at PowerCycleTrading.com and good luck trading tomorrow.